This video is part of a series. Complete the previous videos in this playlist before you start this video. The complete playlist information, the material and the code file information is given in the video description below. Now arrays, one of the most uh, frequent use of arrays is getting the arrays from the data frames. A data frame is a data set. So you have a data set in the outside world or a, you have a CSV file. You get the CSV file and a single column of that CSV file becomes an array. And then you start doing manipulations with it. So if you want to import a data frame, you need a package called Pandas. So we have dedicated one or two sessions on Pandas because we will be handling a lot of data related operations. But as of now, I'll just use Pandas to import a data frame. I will import something called bankmarket.csv using Pandas package. So import Pandas, import Pandas as PD. As I told you, this Pandas is a very important package and we will be doing a lot of pandas related functions. We will be using a lot of pandas related commands later on in the upcoming sessions. So here the syntax goes like this, import pandas as PD. Now the location where I have the file is this one. So directly you can give the location. Here is the CSV file. This CSV file is what I want to import. I will say pandas read underscore CSV, PD dot read underscore CSV, mention the complete path and it will be stored inside this object called bank. This is known as pandas data frame. You can give any name here. So I have given the name as bank. So I have this bank marketing data in a CSV file. I'm storing it in a Python pandas data frame object. Here, these are known as data frames. A data frame is like a data set. In our regular world, we call it as a data set or a data table. Usually we call it as data set or data table. Inside Python, it is known as pandas data frame. Next time when you hear this term called pandas data frame, you have to imagine it is a data set or a data table. So this is what I have imported. If you want to have a look at that data set quickly, you can print that. So bank is the data set. And then if I try to print that, this is the data set. Customer number is there, the same one. Customer number, age, marital status, etc. All these details are given. This is the data set that I have imported. But I'm not really interested in this whole data set. I'm interested in only one column called age. If I want to do all the operations on age column only, if that is the case, how do you access only one column from that data set, store it in an array and then do all the operations? How do you do that? Let me say age underscore variable is equal to np dot array, np dot array. That is a function to create an array. And if you want to access one column, you write the data frame name and that column name automatically it will be accessed. So if you write the data frame name, which is bank and the column name inside the quotation, if you write it, then you will be getting the value of that particular column only. And if you try to see the type automatically, it will be a n dimensional array. The dimension is one here. Now, if I try to see array dot shape, this dot shape, since it is a single dimensional array, it will be having 45,211 rows as it is 45,211 rows. How many columns are there? There are no columns. It is just a one dimensional array. That is why it is left as blank. If at all we are getting age as well as let's say another column called bank balance, then the output will be 45,211 comma two. But here if it is mentioned as 45,211 and there is nothing here, that means there are no columns. So as it is, if you try to print age where it is a one dimensional array, one dimensional array, it will be stored like this. It will not be having any of the values in the columns section. If you see like this, it means that it is a single dimensional array. But if I have two columns, the output will be slightly different. For example, if I try to take two columns, let's say I'll try to do age versus or age versus balance is the analysis that I want to do. I will take two variables, np.array. I will say bank balance as well as age. First, I have to give this as a list. Now this is the list and this is the parenthesis for accessing. So here you have to be careful. There's, you have to write it twice because Earlier without this, we have simply written age, but now you are giving or you're asking for a collection of variables. If you are saying a collection, the collection has to be stored inside a list. So inside that list, I will say age, comma, whatever is a variable name, it has to be exactly the same way. Whatever is a variable name, you mention it here. And then if you try to see the two variables, bank age, comma, balance, here you have to close this. So this is the list that we have given. And then we will try to close this. We are accessing it from the data frame. This is also 
n dimensional array here n is 2 there are two dimensions if i say two variables dot shape can you make a guess what will be the output here two variables dot shape what will be the output uh, 45211 and 2 45,211 rows are there and there are two columns because the output will be a matrix. So if I try to print this output, now that is a matrix, matrix with these many rows and these many columns. As we guessed, it will be having 45,211 comma 2. So here 45,211, nothing means it is a unidimensional array, which is also known as vector. This is a two-dimensional array, which is also known as a matrix. But we will leave that vector and matrix terminology. We can simply say one-dimensional array, two-dimensional array, like that. So here we have given the whole link to access the CSV file. Is it possible to, uh, you know, write the location within from the internal drive to read the CSV file? Internet drive, that access must be given. For example, you have stored a file in your internet drive. And then that location, I have it. But... If you do not give the access, I cannot access, isn't it? So if you have stored it in a Google Drive, the code is slightly different. So if I try to say importing data from a Google Drive location, let us suppose if I try to ask that question to generate the code. So there will be a different code for it altogether. So you have to mount the Google Drive. You have to give the Google Drive location. This is here. We are going to do it in this course. Later on, we will store the data in Google Drive and do it for that. There is a little bit of an extra step that we need to take here. This is an open file. Anybody can open it. There is no restriction on it. But if it is a drive file, there will be an restriction. There will be some kind of restriction. So in simple words, if you have a file that is on Internet, if there is no restriction on it, you can read it in this manner. If there is some restriction, then you have to include a package that will take care of that uh, bypassing and then we will be able to get that file. So what about we want to read a CSV file from our computer, like if it is in C drive, then do we have to give the location? Location, yes, we have to give the complete path. Let us suppose here, our uh, even though this uh, Google Colab looks like it is inside your computer, but you're working on a cloud platform, isn't it? Maybe this particular collab file, this particular uh, file that I'm working on, probably the computer is in California or US or Singapore server. Yes or no? Even though I'm working in my computer, but this is on cloud, isn't it? So this cloud, if you see the drive, it can access only these files, the files that are kept here on the left hand side. If you have any local file, for example, here, I have just downloaded that file. This is my local file. What I'll do is I will look at the properties. If I copy this file somewhere, the link will be given, right? So let me just take this. This is in downloads. So what you need to do is let's say I have, I want to define bank data. I will write PD dot read underscore CSV. We have dedicated two sessions on pandas where I'll be discussing all of this in depth. But since you have asked, we will do it quickly once. Okay. We will write the path along with the data set name. So this is the way we have to write it. But does that work here? Is this going to work? If I do like this, is this going to work? It will fail. Why it will fail? Am I working with this file, this Google Colab, the one that I'm working? Is this notebook inside my computer right now? Is this notebook going to access my C drive? Does it have the access to it? Does it have the access to this location? It doesn't have. So it will not work here. So locally, if you are working with your Jupyter Notebook, this will work. If you are not working with Jupyter Notebook, if you are working with Google Colab, and this function will not work or this way will not work. The reason is we are not working on our local system right now. We are working on a cloud environment. But how to tackle that and all of that, we will go very much in depth into them. Okay. As of now, the focus is not on the data frame. That have, have you realized it, all of you? The focus is not on creating the data frame. The focus is quickly getting a data frame, getting few columns, converting them into arrays, doing the array operations. Once we shift our focus to data frames, I'll go through all of them one by one very much in depth, okay? Try to do this, all of you, this link, you must be having it in the code file. Get this link, make sure that you're creating age, single array, one dimensional array, 
which is like accessing only one column and then two dimensional array, which is accessing two columns, age and balance. In one dimensional array, you have 45,000 rows and column section is blank because it is just one dimensional array. Whereas in two dimensional array, you have 45,000 rows and two columns. Execute these two snippets of code and let me know if you have any questions, all of you. So usually what happens is the kind of operations that we do is we take one column or we take a couple of columns and then we do indexing, we do slicing and we do slice dicing, which we, we want to access a particular element of a value or particular, let us suppose if I'm getting one variable called age out of this whole data set, I want to do analysis, but I don't want to do analysis on the full data. I want all my analysis is related to age only. If that is the case, first I will get age value into a variable. Let's say my age is equal to np.array and then from bank data set, I'm getting age. So if I want to print age, this is the age array. Now, once it is an array, you can use all those indexing, slicing and dicing in the sense, if I want to access 58, tell me what is the syntax for accessing 58 only out of this? What is the syntax? I will write the array name and then I will write the index index of 58 is zero so i'll get the value 50. what if i want to get 58 44 33 first 10 elements how do i get first 10 elements tell me what is the syntax for getting first 10 elements i will write the array Which? name zero. and then zero, zero to 10. Eleven. Eleven. Yeah. shall i put 11 or 10? 10, 10. If I put 10, automatically it will be 0 to 9, which is first 10 elements, isn't it? If I put 0 to 11, that will be printing 11 elements. We'll check that. 1, yes. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now let me make it simple. If I want to print first 5 elements, I will put 0 to 5. That will print 5. For first 5 elements, if I put 0 to 6, then it will be printing what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But I'm interested in only first 5 elements. So this is index 0, index 1, index 2, 3, 4. So 0 to 4 will be printed even though I'm saying zero to five because this is included, this is excluded, zero. isn't it? What if I want to print 37? What if I want to print 37? Tell me the option. Zero to 13. Do not put anything in the so 37 is the age of the age value. Which which number is this? 37, eight. the row ID is 45,210. That is the ID. Would I want to print 37? Shall I put zero to 37? Let me put that. Age, zero to... 37. Is that going to print the last one? No, I am interested in printing this one. So this doesn't work. That's wrong. How do I access this one? Last so element. Minus one. So if you want to come from behind, you have to say age of minus one. Either that is one option or you have to write the max index. Whatever is the max index? 45,211. That is the max index, isn't it? Age of 45,211. Index is out of bounds. Access. So 45,210 because if you have zero to that value, so either you write the max index value or you write minus one. Usually this is preferred because not always we may know this or even if we know this either this way or this way, one of these two ways, you will get the maximum value of age or the, not the maximum value, the, the number that is right at the end, the last value of the row is 37. That is how you access it using minus one. That is one type of index or you can write the actual index value. Initially, I told you to use the positive index only, but if you're comfortable, you go ahead, use the negative index as well. Usually negative indexing is used if you want to come from behind, right from the back, like if you want to start the counting here. So using that logic, can you tell me how do I access 57 number? How do I access 57? Minus one there are two minus ways two. to do it. First one is what? 57 is what I want to access. So I would say age. How do I put it? Minus two. That will also give me or what is the way from the positive indexing point of view? It will be instead of 210, it will be 209. Either this way or this way. You can. The last five uh, numbers. Hmm. Then it will be like minus one, two, minus six. That's a good question. We have discussed that. You remember how negative work uh, indexing works? Minus one, two, minus six. There is a small flaw in that. What is it? Indexing starting point should be smaller. Ending point should be larger. Yes or no? If yes. you say minus one to minus six, minus one is smaller than minus six or larger than minus six? 
Larger. So minus one. It should be minus six to minus. It should be minus six to minus one. Okay. Are you with me? Because yes. it has to be smaller value to larger value, starting point and ending point. So the numbers are correct, but logically it has to be minus six to minus one. I think in the last session we had a kind of lengthy discussion on that. Yes. Th yes. That is a point that I told that okay, if this negative indexing is little confusing, last ten maybe know the last index and then uh, subtract five from there and work with positive indexing only. Okay. But I think if you do it a couple of times, automatically you will realize. Let's say last five values. If I put minus six. Two minus one, automatically it will try to give me the last one. Works. The indexing, whatever the theory that we have discussed, the indexing almost remains the same here as well, even in the overall uh, arrays as well as lists or in string in general. Anywhere in Python, the indexing rules are same. The again, when you are giving it this way, this one included, this one excluded. That is also that rule also kind of obeyed and this must be smaller than this one that rule also obeyed minus one means coming from behind that rule also obeyed or if i want to access the three elements let's say if i want to access the element is at index one index nine index ten how do i access index one nine ten let us suppose if i have this data now this is index one which is 44 index four is 33 so 44 33 and this one is what i want to access if i want to access at different different places i just need to give the list of indices let's say my list of index that i want to give first write them down whatever you want so i want it at one i want it at nine i want it at forty four thousand or forty one thousand these are the three indexes i want then i simply write instead of saying list index i would say my index because list will be confusing so my index this is what and then if i want to get those values at the indices at Position 1 is 44, at position 9 is 30, 43, at position 41,000 is 28. If you want to write it in one go, you write age, and this is for accessing. Inside that, you can define this. Inside that, you try to define this, this manner. It will try to give you the final values. Age variable, and then you get it, this one. Instead of this way, I usually suggest it this manner in the initial days because we want it to have a little kind of clarity what are the indices that you want at multiple places first you know that and then you try to supply it as the input right now you may not feel the need of it but if you have let's say take an example of you have top 100 ranked countries in that somebody wants to know what is the country at 45th rank what is the country at 6th rank what is the country at 97th rank so i would like to know exactly what is the country on 6th position what is a country at 10th position? What is a country at 98th position? What is a country at 100th position? That is what I wanted to know. Then I give it in this manner. Then whatever is, let's say, if that contains country names, country name 1, country name 2, 3, 4 may come. So this is precisely getting it from a particular index. This is one index at a time. This is like a bunch of values which are contained at these two indices or from starting from here to here, which is like between these two indices values. Now let us go to a situation where we have two dimensional array. This is all single dimensional array. Either we are taking age or balance. What if I have two dimensional array? Okay. So let me call them as two variables or two dimensions, two dim array. Or let me call that as two variables together or let me call it in simple manner age and balance age and balance is equal to np dot array age comma balance so that is a two dimensional array if you try to see age balance it looks like this this is a two dimensional array now in two dimensional array indexing is a two level you have to give the indexing of rows you have to give the indexing of columns you cannot give a single index if you give single index maybe python may misunderstand as well you have to give two indexes you have two dimensions. So here you will be talking about giving two two indices at one type. So let us suppose if I want to access 58. What is the row index for 58? What is the row index for 58? Which row is that? What is the row index for 58? First row. So first row index is what? Zero. 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 What is the column index for 58? What is the column index for Zero. 58? Column zero zero. So if I write age underscore bal underscore zero zero, what is the expected value? Age underscore bal zero zero. 
what is expected value 58 i want all of you to confirm this before i go ahead have you understood this 58 has a yes. row index of 0 are you with me yes. everyone yes sir yes, yes. 58 has a column index of 0 i have given 0 0 element which one is the 0 0 element 58 now if i want 2 1 4 3 in the output 0 1 what is the row index 0 0 what is the column index 1 1 Yes or no, isn't it? Column is zero column, first column. So if I say age bal zero comma one, let me put it here itself, zero comma one. What is expected output? Two one four three. Two one four three. How do you print thirty seven? How do you print thirty seven? Sir, row index is two. Thirty seven. This thirty seven. Thirty seven. It is the last. So last one. How do you access the last one? Four five two one zero. Four five two one zero minus one. Four five two one zero or minus one any one of them comma zero zero. What is the negative index way? Either you say last one, you can say that as minus one comma zero is also fine. But for you, I'm saying maybe look at the index and then the last index is this one. So that is when you want to access one element at a time. Now look at my requirement. Here I have a different requirement. I want to print 58, 44, 58 and 44. That should be my output. How do I print that? I want 58 comma 44. I want these two. So you write age underscore balance. And mentally you are thinking what is this containing? What is this called? Row oh. index. Row Tell index. me row index to print the first two elements. What should be the row index to print the first two elements? Two is to one. 0 is to 1. You are absolutely wrong. I want you to think one more time. If I write 0 is to 1, what is it and in two Python? Elements, 0, 0, is to two. Two. 0 is to 2. Why? Because? For 2 uh, elements. For 2 elements. Because the 2 will be ignored, isn't it? It looks like 0 to 1, but the thing is it has to be 0 to 2, isn't it? And then column index. So row index is covered, column index. What should be the column index? Are you? What is the column index? 0. Blank. Column index is 0. Blank. 0, column 0. 0. 0 column 0 is also same as 0 only, isn't it? Let me write row <laughs> indices. Let me write column indices here. So indices, I will write it down just to avoid confusion. So this is what index 0. These are all row indexes. Index 1, index 2, index. Last one is what? 4, 1, 5, 0, is it? 41,000. Last index is what? 45,210. 45,209, 45,208. These are the indices. This is index 0, index 1. Is that indexing clear, all of you? Now, coming back to our discussion, I want to access these two, 58, 44. So, we have to think it from the index point of view. Index 0 to 2. Is this correct or wrong? Correct. Now, the next one, Are you? if you leave blank, it will print everything. If you mm. give index 1, it will print here. If you give index 0, it will print here. So I will put 0. So do you think this is going to print 58,44? Let us check that. Age balance, I will say 0 to 2. Can you confirm 0 to 2 is correct? And then comma index 0. 58,44. Is that right or wrong? Right. Yeah, makes sense or not? Now, if I leave yes, blank, what will happen? If I leave blank, what am I mentioning? Am I mentioning no columns, only one column, or all the columns? All the columns. All the columns. What is the expected output if I give 0 to 2, comma, blank, everything? What will be the expected output? Uh, from 4, 3, 2, 2, 9, 10, 1. So it will be 58, 2, 1, 4, 3, 44, and 29. There will be four elements. Isn't it? Because there are only two columns. Columns are left oh. to be all of them. Rows are restricted. Can you tell me how do I access 2, 1, 4, 3 and 29? Only these two I want in the output. Can you tell me what is the command that I have to write here? 2, 1, 4, 3, 29. Let's go back to that PPT. 2, 1, 4, 3, 29 is what I want in the output. Right or wrong? Yes. What is the row index? How many rows are there? Row index. Row, you have to think from the Zero. rows point of view. See the column. Zero. 0 colon 1 or 0 colon 2? 0 colon 2, sir. 0 colon 2, that is a row index. Yes or no? 
Row index doesn't That's change, true. isn't it? Earlier you asked for 58, 44. Now the row index is also same for 2, 1, 4, 3, 29. Yes or no? Think about it. Yes, what is the column same. index? What is the column index? One. 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 Makes sense or not? 2, 1, 4, 3, comma, 29. Yes, yes. We have to think carefully. That is why I'm forcing you to think in a streamlined manner. Otherwise, it looks simple to understand. But when we are actually recapping them, that will be very difficult. In indexing, there is number one rule. What is it? If I write in Python, 0 to 10, it is called including 0, excluding 10. Do you remember that? Yes. Let's say yes. there was a, mm. well, a couple of examples that we discussed. You have 1, comma, 19, comma, 23, comma, 24. Okay. If I and what are the indexes? Zero comma one comma two comma three. These are the indexes. Yes or no? For yes, those yes, numbers. Yes. yes or no? If I want to print one comma nineteen, what should be the case that I will be saying? If I want to print, let's say one comma nineteen comma twenty three, what should I say? Zero, zero to three. three. It will be zero to three. Why? 0 is included, 3 is excluded. Have we discussed that rule? Yes. Now I want the first two elements only, 1, 19. How do I write it? 0 to 2. 0 to 2. Here, what is the question? I want first two elements, 21, 4, 3 and 29. What should I write? 0 to 2 or 0 to 1? 0 to 2. 0 to 2 only? Yes or no? Yes, yes. 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 Makes sense or not? And that yes. is the row wise. Now, from the column point of view, what is the point there? Which column are we accessing? First column or second column? Second, second column. Second column index is what? One. Second one. column is index is one. So okay. the requirement that you have, is it fulfilling your requirement? Yes. Yes. Sir. yes sir. Yeah. I want 58, comma 2143. What I want, what is the objective? 58, comma 2143. Have you understood what I'm trying to ask you? All of you. Yes, sir. Now, I want you to think about row index. Row index zero. is what? Row index is? Zero, zero to two. Zero to two? Yes, sir. Yes. 58, comma, 2, 1, 4, 3, 0 to 2, mila to kya hoga? Row will be this. You will be going. Only beyond. zero, sir. Only zero, zero, no? Zero. Only zero. I want uh, 58, comma, 2, 1, 4, 3. If you go Only from zero. zero to two, you will go 58, 44. 44. Exactly. Isn't it? In column mm -hmm. index also, we have to put... Uh, we have to put is zero. this zero index understood row index why it is zero only because am i going beyond first row no, no. Sir. No. It? Hmm? no since it is first row i'm saying the row index is zero what are the column indices starting column column zero index to has two. to run zero is to one or zero is to two, zero is to two. One. Yes, sir. if you say zero is to one what happens this is included this is excluded no, excluded zero so will you get two. that output no zero is to two it has to be 0 to 2. This is included. This is excluded. That means you will get 0 column and? Column. So what I'll say is I'll write one more line here. The moment you write like this, it includes 0 column and first column. Because still there is little confusion about 0 to 2 or 0 to 1, isn't it? That is why. Include 0 column and first column. So now the way we should write it is row index is 0. So that is the 58 and 2, 1, 4, 3. Make sense or not, all of you? Yes, sir. I want 44.29. Oh, let's say I want 44.29, 33,2. This is the output that I want. Can you tell me a modification in this? Uh, 1 is to 3. 0 to 3, sir. Oh, this, all these three. This is the output okay. that I want. Zero to three. 0 to 3. 0 to 3. Because I in want... The column index is 0 to 2. 0 to 2 as it is. So 0 to yes, 3. Sir. 0 to 2. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yeah. Are we getting it? Now, what if I want only this as the output? 4429, 33, 2. Sir, what if we need 58, 33, 2, 1, 4, 3, and 2? You want in between, is it? In between. So, you create my row index. Okay, in a list. Okay. Whatever you want to name. Okay. What do you want? 58? 58. Yes, 33. Hmm. Oh, you want 58, then, 33 from the point of view of the data, is it? Yes, sir. Yes, ah, sir. So, okay. Let's do that. So, in the data, I want 58. 
first row is what we want 58,2143. Yes, sir. 58,2143 and then 33,2. And then, uh, yeah, these two is what you want. If this is what yes, we sir. want, so basically we want the index zero, but not index one, but index two. So my yes, row sir. indices are a list right now. So in this list, what should I give? Index zero and index two, zero comma two. There's a difference from zero two to zero comma two. What are my column indices? This is fine, zero two two. So now in, in the row index, I will write zero comma two. Or a better way to do it is, usually I prefer this way. My row index is equal to a list of zero comma Okay, so here I will bring that my row index, which is zero index and index two, comma whatever is the column index. That will print those two. Make sense? More time, I didn't get it. Try to think about it. Give it a shot. Little bit think. What does zero index zero contain? So the row. The row. So index zero is 58, two, one, four, three. Yes, sir. Now, if you want zero, one, two, you will write zero to two. Yes, sir. If you want zero, but you do not want one, if you want two or if you want 29, then I'm creating indices first. I'm getting all those indices, zero comma two here. This is a list of indices only. Two indices only will be picked. Yes, sir. Yes. So I have stored them in a list. So what am I passing to my array that I want to access only index zero, which is 58. Two yes, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. And index three only this one. Let's do one more different one. Let us suppose if I write age balance zero only. If I write age balance zero only, what will be the output? Try that quickly. Tell me what is the default value it is trying to assume. Is it taken as the first row printing 58 to 143? Or is it taken as first column, which is printing 58, 44, 33, et cetera, et cetera. Is it printing the first row or the first column? By default, if you do not give two indices, by default, what is the default value? By default, if you give only one index, what is it giving you? By default, if you are not giving anything, it is taken as the row index. Are you getting the same number, 58, 2, 1, 4, 3? If I do the opposite, can you tell me what is the expected output? This is left blank, but this one is considering only column zero. What is the expected output here? So in this case, what we do is we put a colon. What is the meaning of this colon? Before that, there is nothing. After that, there is nothing. What are we trying to tell here by giving it in this manner? What is the starting position? Blank. Ending position? Blank. Blank to blank means what? All the values. All the values. Then it will try to print all the values in the first column. 58, 44, 33, 72, etc. Now what if I keep it this manner? Blank to blank rows, blank to blank columns. What is the expected output of this one? First row index. All. Yes or no? Column index. All. all. I'm simply going to print. Everything in age balance, I don't think it is required, isn't it? There is no point in printing in, in the view of indices directly. You can print also. But this is usually used if you want to extract all the rows and a particular column. Or in contrary, if you want to extract all the columns and a particular row, if you are interested in row index 2 and all the columns or a particular column and all the rows, we can use these starting and ending positions blank. Again, this indexing from the complexity point of view, it's not that complex, but it requires a lot of practice and time with it. We have to experiment. I have tried my best to experiment as much as possible, but you yourself have to experiment a lot. Maybe thousand other combinations can be created from this, isn't it? What if I want to print only last four columns? What if I want to print uh, in between columns? What if I want to print in between rows? What if I want to experiment with uh, five variables? What if I want to take age, balance, education? These three variables are there then. Can you experiment a bit further? So I want you to take this as the starting point. We have done as much experimentation as we can. I want you to take maybe third column as well. 
and try to experiment as much as possible. And there can be negative indexing also. That is also possible. For example, if I put minus one here, can you tell me what is the expected output if I put minus one? If I put minus one here, what is the expected output? If seven, two, nine, seven, one. Reverse. Seven. Reverse from it will start row index is minus one means the last row index 37 and 2971 will be printed and both the columns are mentioned here. So column index is this. So there is a hell lot of other indexes that you can try only it's just the combination. All the index values are this. Okay. I want you to go through whatever discussion that we had once again and then try to do it once again on three variables. Try to write some question. If I want to access that, how do I do it? Anyway, there will be a dedicated assignment for this NumPy as well in that you will get more and more uh, practice examples. But before that, you yourself have to first be comfortable with this indexing. So we'll stop the discussion here today. Continue with the next video in the playlist. We are covering everything step by step. If you have any questions or the comments, please post them in the comments window below.